Are we on? Hi, good morning. This is Yatin. You with the Science Diaries. I'm sorry, I was just wrapping up my breakfast. And look what I found. Check this out. It's a regular egg. It's an egg that's not boiled. It's raw, so I better be careful with it. Did you see that? Did you see it bounce? Or did you miss it? Let me do it again for you. It bounced. It's amazing. You saw that, right? That's my bouncy egg. It's magical, is it not? So you want to know the secret? The secret behind this magical bouncy egg? Well, come closer and I'll show you. So I have a magic portion, a magic ingredient. It's actually this. Check this. This is ordinary vinegar. I'll tell you how to go about it. It's quite simple, basically. You get some eggs, like this, and you get a glass. What you need to do is, you basically put the egg in the glass. This is a regular egg, okay? Mind you, this is not boiled. You put it in the glass and you top it up with vinegar. That's about it. But you need some patience with this. You need to let it sit in the vinegar for two to three days. You come back to it every morning, come and say, hello egg, how are you doing? And then twirl it a bit, leave it there for three days and what you get in the end is this, your magical bouncy egg. Just in time for our secret today, we have with us Ishan. Hey Ishan, welcome to the show. Come sit with us. So I was telling the kids back home the secret around my magical bouncy egg. Do you know this egg actually bounces? Check this. Wow, cool. Did you use vinegar? Well, actually I did. How did you know that? Well, an eggshell is made of calcium carbonate and vinegar is acidic. When both are put together, they react, right? Oh my God, kids today, they know everything. How old are you, Ishan? Ten. Oh boy, back when I was 10, all I did was play book cricket in my science class. But Ishan is quite right. The acid in the vinegar actually dissolves the shell of the egg and you're left with this rubbery membrane. It was a cool egg experiment. <laughs> well, enough with the egg. I'm going to tell you about our first scientist today on the Science Diaries. Sure, it sounds like fun. Our first scientist of the day on Science Diaries is Sir C.V. Raman. Have you heard of him? Didn't he win a Nobel Prize? Kids today, I tell you. Well, Ishan's quite right. He did win a Nobel Prize. In fact, it's quite an interesting story. He was once travelling on the ocean and he wondered... Why, it was blue! Wait a second, I have a book about him. I'm sure you have a book. It's why the sky is blue. Oh boy, yes, that's right. Let's learn a little bit more about him and his discoveries in the Science Diaries. This is Chandrasekhar Venkat Raman, better known as C.V. Raman. He won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1930. In fact, he was the first Asian and the first non-white to receive a Nobel Prize in the sciences. Now, C.V. Raman was born in 1888 in Tamil Nadu, in this small town called Thiruvanaikaval. These are his parents. Raman had many siblings. He was one of eight children. Raman was a government servant, but he loved science. So, in his spare time, he started working at the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science in Calcutta. Here, he studied acoustics of musical instruments, especially Indian drums such as the tabla and the mridangam. His first trip outside India was to Oxford in 1921. On his way there, he was intrigued by the blue of the sea. Many believed that it was the reflection of the sky. But Raman knew there was more to it than that. The search for the answer led him to do many experiments on light in Calcutta. But he needed more instruments. So he wrote to industrialist G.D. Birla asking him to fund a spectrograph. He promised he would use this to win a Nobel Prize for India. He kept his promise. In 1930, he won the Nobel Prize for the Raman effect, which explains the scattering of light. Some say that he managed this using equipment worth merely rupees 300. The Raman effect is now examined with the help of equipment worth millions of rupees. Raman announced this discovery on 28th February in 1928. This day is celebrated as the National Science Day in India. In the history of the Nobel Prize, nobody was awarded one so quickly after their major contribution. On an average, it takes about a decade to recognize the merit of any discovery. But in Raman's case, it took just two years. 
It is said that Raman cried during the Nobel Prize ceremony because there was a British flag rather than an Indian one on his chair. So that was an interesting session about the life and stories of Sir C. V. Raman. I have one more question. Sure, tell me. What is the use of the Raman effect? Well, actually, quite simply, when a beam of light hits a molecule, it gets scattered. It gets scattered in a unique pattern. That pattern is called the Raman effect, much like our fingerprints. In today's world, the Raman effect is used in many places. Have you seen those scanners at the airport? Yeah. There are these Raman scanners which are actually used to detect if somebody is carrying drugs and such things. Cool. I never knew this stuff. Actually, the Raman effect is still relevant, and that's the fun part. I think we need a break, don't we? Yeah. On the other side of this break, there's more fun science only on the Science Diaries. Be right back. Hey there, you're back on the Science Diaries with me, Yatin. Now shall we do some experiments with lights and rainbows? What will we do? Will we demonstrate the Raman effect? <laughs> Not really, that's actually quite complicated. We're going to do something much simpler. Um, the spectrograph, perhaps? I can make a rainbow. You do? Yeah. Okay, sure, tell me. But can you get me a glass of water first? Sure, why not? Hold on, huh? Yeah, finish it up. I'm not going to drink it. It's for my experiment to make rainbows. Oh, we're doing an experiment? What all do we need? I have it all here. A torch, a CD, a sheet of paper and a glass of water. Perfect. Could you please dim the lights? Sure. Lights. Oh, cool. <laughs> Are we ready to roll? Yeah. Let's go ahead. So how do we go about getting the rainbows? Put the glass of water on the white sheet. Okay. Then take the flashlight and put the light through an angle. Okay, that looks nice. You need to make sure that the angle is right. Only then you'll be able to see the rainbow. Can you see that there? Yeah, look at it. Now let's try it with a CD. Can you hold the CD? Sure. Oh wow, look at this. This one's big. Yeah, let's try one more. Let's put the glass of water in front of the CD. Now look. There's a short one. Oh yes, that's because it reflects back through this glass of water. Yeah. This is super cool. Now let me tell you a little bit about the science behind this. Can we get the lights on? Sure. Amazing. What happens is when we're using the glass and passing the light through it, the light actually bends. It refracts and breaks into its components. Those seven colors that you see in a rainbow, that's actually because of the refraction. So, what happens in a CD? Well, actually, it's the same principle. The light bounces off the ridges of the CD and creates that rainbow. So, what is a spectra? Oh my, you have like a million questions. The spectra is actually an array of colors that come out. I have one more question. Okay, what is that? What is at the end of a rainbow? Seriously? At the end of the rainbow? I guess it's a pot of gold. No. The letter W. Oh my god, you guys have a crazy sense of humor. Ishan, how about we try our hand building a spectroscope? What's that? A spectroscope is actually a device that breaks different sources of light into different spectra. Will you help me build this spectroscope? Yes. Perfect. Help me grab those ingredients. There's a box right there which has everything we need. Thank you so much. So here's what we need, Ishan. One, we need a box. This is the most important ingredient. It has to be around this size. Next, we need some CDs, just like this. We need this tube. This is like a roll. We need some visiting cards. We need some things to cut with. And uh, we need some tape. We need a ruler. And of course, our sources of light. So I have a few here. There's this torch. This one gives a white light. Uh, this one's an LED torch and of course we have some candles. Awesome. And then there's some paper. We'll use this to basically cover the box later on. Okay? So what's next? Well, uh, we're gonna go stick this CD on the inside of this box. Hold this and I'm gonna create some space. How do you put it? Like this or uh, this? 
uh, yeah, the shiny side should be looking at me. Okay, perfect. And we use some tape, basically stick it on the four sides. Like that, perfect. So what's next? Okay, cool. So next, uh, we're gonna basically put this tube in on this side here, but we should kind of draw this so that we know where to cut. Okay, do you have a pen or something? I have a pen, I have a pen. <laughs> awesome, you just hold the tube here and I'm gonna go draw this for you. Like that, perfect. And then uh, just another half circle. This tube will be on a slant, right? Just like that. Can you see this? Yeah. Perfect. What's next? So next, we're basically gonna cut a hole around this. What are you going to cut it with? <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut with this. Uh... That looks sharp. Oh, well, it is actually sharp. For those of you who are doing this at home, make sure you have an adult around when you're doing this at home. So like that, okay? Can I fix the tube, please? <laughs> yes, you will, in a little bit of time. I need to make another slit on this side from where we'll shine the light source. So what we do is basically draw a little slit here. We take the ruler and a pen and we sort of draw a two inch line, just about uh, half a centimeter apart. And once again, we use a cutter to, to basically cut this out. So this is actually gonna be the source of our light. Like that. Uh, we're gonna use two visiting cards to basically cover this lid. Okay. So uh, if you can hold this here, I'm gonna tape them. Yeah, perfect. Just make sure that the uh, visiting cards are not too far apart because then the too much light will go inside. That'll make the image blurry. And, and if they're too narrow, then not so much light would go inside. Now this is the source of our light. We close the box out and we insert our tube. Can I insert the tube? Sure you can, come, do it here. Just make sure that it's a little slanted so that you can look at the CD when you're looking at it from this side. Perfect, this is awesome, you're doing a good job. I'm gonna tape this around so that uh, we make sure that there's no light going in from this side, okay? In fact, I wish I had some darker colored tape. I so have some red tape, will that do? You have it all in your bag, huh? Oh, awesome, this looks good. And here we go. Yeah, just surround it on all four sides. Here we go. Here we have the slit from where the light goes in. Here's from where we view and the CD's on the inside. So now we're gonna go ahead and cover this up with some bright paper. I will cover mine with red and blue stripes. Yes, absolutely, any color that you like. So there are two reasons why we cover this up. One, it'll make it look good. Two, it'll prevent any light from leaking in. So we actually have a finished piece, one that we've already covered. Let me show you that. Here we go. Check this. Cool, that looks fantastic. So this is ready now. How about we start our experiment? Yes, right now, right now, just do it. <laughs> we have this ready. I'm gonna go ahead, shine the light sources and you tell me what you see. So here we have a yellow torch. Tell me what you see. Wow, there's a spectrum, there's lots of colors. So <laughs> change it, change the light source. Okay, wait, I have some white light as well. Tell me if you see a difference. Well, there is a difference. There's some bluish in the end. Keep looking and I'll show you an LED. Can you see something? Wow, it's so different. Look at the color, it's the best. <laughs> yes, you like it, right? Yeah. Perfect. We're gonna try with a small little candle light as well. See this, can you see this? Well, I don't see anything much, it's too faint. Yeah, it's a candle. But how does it work? <laughs> well, it's actually quite simple. The spectrograph actually breaks different light sources into its various components. That's why we saw various rainbows. Yeah. I think we're done with our light experiments today, but that was fun. Yeah, that really was fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today, man. It was Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Ciao. Up next on the other side of the break, DNA science and art. Be right back. Hi there, you're still with Science Diaries and I'm Yatin. We've had some great fun today. It was fun working with lights and the rainbow. Up next is genetics. And to help us with genetics, we have with us Albana. 
Hello there. Welcome to the show. Hi, Atin. Hi, nice to meet you. You too. How are you? Awesome. This has been a fun day. Yes, I'm waiting to see what's up next. Yes, we have an action packed day today. We're going to talk about genetics. Did you know anything about that? Well, I think genetics is what you know we inherit from our parents. It's our identity. Oh boy, kids today they know everything. So I hear you're quite the artist. Well, I have quite a few ideas about DNA and art. You know, combining them together. And you know, people just take a picture of their DNA and frame it on the wall like a personalized piece of art. I'll show you a few pictures. Seriously, genetics and art. There's art. They connect it with bridges and furniture. And my favorite, the earrings. They're so pretty. Oh my God, that's actually cool. How did you get all this? I googled it on my way here. So, what do you have in store for us today? I was planning to build a model of our DNA using pipe cleaners and beads. Shall we start off? Absolutely. Let's do this. Okay. So the first step is take the black pipe cleaner and measure two inches and cut it out. I'm going to do that for you. Okay. So that's about it. Oh, cool. Let me take care of this for you. Okay, sure. So how many of these do we need? Around nine. Meanwhile, I'm going to take an orange pipe cleaner and fill in orange and blue beads. I'm putting alternate colors, and I'll have eight pairs of these on one string. That's nine of them. Okay. Let me help you with this. Yeah, sure. So for the next step, I'm going to take the rungs and beat them with our matching pairs. I'm going to take a brown and green. What about you? Oh, I'll take yellow and red. Sure. So you know why we do this in pairs? Not really. Why? Well, it's actually because on a DNA, the proteins are always in matching pairs. Oh, really? Yes, it is. So now I'm going to attach these rungs to finish up my DNA ladder. Okay, sure. Yep, let's go ahead. This looks good. Okay, so to wrap up my DNA ladder, I'm going to twist it a little to give it a double helix shape. Oh, that looks nice. So how about you use this cool stand to hang that? Yeah, sure. Now that looks really amazing. We've done a good job. Haven't we? It's so cool. And it sure does look good. In genetics, we keep hearing these terms. There's the gene, there is chromosome, and there's the DNA. Let me help you figure out what they mean. So, the DNA is what we just made. That's the double helix that carries our genetic code. The gene is basically a stretch of that DNA. While the gene is a stretch of a DNA, the chromosome is actually a very big DNA. All this talk of chromosomes brings us to the next scientist of the day, Joe Hinchio. He's from Indonesia. Let's look at him in the Science Diary. This is Joe Hinchio. He is a cytogeneticist, a scientist who studies the structure and the working of a chromosome. He became famous because he discovered that humans had 23 pairs of chromosomes, not 24, as was believed before. Now, Chio was born in Java, that's in Indonesia, to Chinese parents on November 27th in 1919. His father was a professional portrait photographer and used to develop photographs and make prints in the dark room. This knowledge learned from his father proved a valuable asset for him when it came to photographing microscope images. Chio got a degree in agriculture. He then became interested in breeding potatoes and attempted to produce hybrids resistant to disease. During World War II, Chio was imprisoned by the Japanese Imperial Army, which occupied his country. Chio languished in a concentration camp for three years till 1945. After the war, he boarded a Red Cross boat for displaced persons and was shipped to Holland. Their government provided him with a fellowship to study in Europe. He spent half a year at the Royal Danish Academy in Copenhagen and then journeyed to the University of Lund in Sweden. He worked here at the Institute of Genetics. At that time, scientists thought that human cells had 48 chromosomes. That's 24 pairs. In 1955, Chio showed that they had 46, not 48. He managed this almost accidentally. He was extracting the chromosomes from the nuclei of some cells and he found that he was able to count the chromosomes, leading to his path-breaking discovery. After this, scientists were able to establish the link between abnormal chromosomes in certain diseases, like the understanding that an additional chromosome is present in patients with Down syndrome. 
Chiyo's finding paved the way for a whole new world of genetic study. Now that's an interesting story and we have a fascinating discovery from yeah, him. Yeah, wasn't it? Don't chromosomes also decide our gender? It absolutely does. In fact, our body has 23 chromosomes. The 23rd one determines our gender. You get the first X from your mother. The other one, if you get an X from your father, you're a girl. And if you get a Y from your father, you become a boy. It's really cool to know that everything that we are is actually embedded within our DNA. It sure is. Would you like to see your own DNA? Like DNA art? No, actually it's DNA science. Would I have to go to like a lab or something? In fact, we can actually do it right here. For those of you watching with us, you can actually follow along and do this at home. Well, what do we need for this? Let's get that organized. So here's what we need. Some water and some salt. Rubbing alcohol that you can find at your local chemist store. Dishwashing liquid and a few glasses. And that's all what we need to get us going. So here's what we do. We get a glass, we fill it up with about half a litre of water. Lovely. Now we add a tablespoon of salt. Okay. And we stir this up really well. Let me do that for you. Here, you're next. We take three tablespoons of this salt water into the glass. Okay. That's easy, right? Yeah. Awesome. And here's the fun part. You're supposed to use this water and you gargle with it and you spit it back into the same glass. What? No way am I doing that. So I'm actually serious. I'm not trying to gross you out. When you gargle with the salt water, what happens is that your cheek cells, they get suspended in the water. The more you gargle, the more cheek cells come out. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll do it. Cool. Let's do that. Keep going. You're supposed to do this for about a minute. Yep, another 30 seconds. So next, we add a drop of dishwashing liquid into this. Like so. So the dishwashing liquid helps break the cell membranes, which causes the DNA to come out into the salt water. So does that mean my DNA is floating freely in the water? It is and we're gonna check it out. We have two more steps to go. Okay. So next we take this rubbing alcohol and we pour it very gently over the saliva. We want to make sure it forms a layer. So be gentle, don't drop it in. What now? What do we have to do? Well, we just wait. For how long? Uh, well, it should take about two and a half minutes. I'm going to set it here. Don't touch it. Let it rest for about two and a half minutes and I'll be right back. So we have to wait? We do. So here we are. Is it done? Let's check it out. Can you see those white lumps? Mm-hmm. That's actually you. That's my DNA. You bet. Whoa. So what happens is, the DNA is actually not soluble in alcohol. It forms a solid layer between these two layers that you see. These white clumps here are actually thousands of strands of DNA. You can't really see just one with your naked eye. Yeah, but can I at least take a selfie with them? Absolutely, go on right ahead. So while Albana is busy taking her selfies and posting them online, or whatever these guys do these days, I'm going to have to say goodbye. Do join us again on the next episode of Science Diaries when we have more fun with science. Goodbye. Hey, where's my picture? Let's take on that. Cool, sure.